Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and welcome back to another video for Eve Echoes. In this video we're going to be looking at the Cobalt Edge exploration logs and also going through some Chinese website information that gives a lot more detail than we're getting on the global server because of course this is just par for the course at this point in time. Now what this does serve is to show that actually the leak that I had was almost entirely accurate. Things are disappointing at best and actually really really quite bad at worse, and I know a lot of you complain in the comment section saying, oh Benzi, you're always so negative about Eve Echoes, why can't you just give it a little bit of hope? This is why, because every time that we see how bad something's going to be and I showcase it and people go, oh, well maybe it's not going to be like that, you're just being needlessly negative, no, give it a few days and I'm vindicated every single time. It's the old line from Avasarala in The Expanse. One of us is wrong, I think it's you, I hope that it's me. I've not been wrong yet. That's not meant as arrogance, that's just how it is. Anyway, let's not do a massive preamble in this because there is a lot of information to cover here and, well, just buckle up, all right? Because we're looking at exactly what is coming on August 17th as the Cobble Edge update for the third anniversary of Eve Echoes. So first of all, we've got three images that NetEase themselves have shared. These are were posted to Discord, Twitter, probably Facebook as well. I don't know, I don't use it. Um, Essentially, these were released on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, giving us a brief rundown of what's coming in Cobalt Edge. So let's have a look at these first. Day one, the Cobalt Edge comprises 69 star systems spread across 10 uh, constellations, all with security levels below zero, so it's nullsec. The logistics supply station has also been established on Planet 6 of the EBYOS system. We talked about this one in the dev Q&A on Saturday. That is already a little worrying. There is one station in Cobble Edge, NPC station, that is going to be camped to all hell. Every single gate out of that system, that actual station itself, is going to be a constant PvP nightmare with interdictors and full fleets sitting on it. Now, if you remember what it was like when we first did Verge of Silence and you just had capitals and people sitting there just ready to jump on anyone and everyone who came through, that's what's going to happen here. The first major group to discover EBYOS is just going to camp it. They will dock their ships up there and they will just camp it and kill everyone and anyone who happens to come close. Good luck getting in there. I'm not saying this is a negative. PvP is a good thing in the game but there is no allowance for how to get around this. It's going to be the first group to find that system is going to own it for pretty much until they decide to log off. It's that simple. Pilots in New Eden must rely on unstable wormholes and long-distance cloning to travel to Cobble Edge. These wormholes are found in low-sec regions and within Cobble Edge. All ships, including supercarriers, can access these wormholes. Of course they can. The concept of tonnage gating on a wormhole, of mass gating a wormhole as it is in EVE Online, not going to exist in Echoes because they've been selling supercarriers to people and they don't want those people to turn around and go, oh, the new content, I can't access it with the super expensive ship that I bought. We were talking about this in the CC chat on the official Discord the other day. This is NetEase's way of monetizing the game and therefore balance has to fall in with that. If your goal is to sell people the next big thing, then everything has to be better than what was before. A simple example of this would be the Navy issue battleships. NetEase want you to buy a Navy issue battleship, right? Which means you can't just have it as a side grade to the Apocalypse Striker. It has to be the Apocalypse Striker, but better, so that people are basically tempted to part with their hard-earned cash. The same goes with once you've got people into battleships and they fully upgraded it, you want them to be excited about the next thing. You want them to spend into that. And so rather than going, well, why would I go into this when I've got a fully upgraded battleship, the new thing, carriers, had to be better than a fully upgraded battleship so that people would buy into that and start to pay to upgrade it. And now that people have got their carriers fully upgraded with implants and nanocores, they brought along the versatile assault carriers. And then once people have started fully upgrading those, it's now the super carriers. And so on this goes. Just as you finish this, because they want to sell you the next thing, the next thing has to be better than what you already have. 
And because this is better than this, and this is better than this, suddenly the difference between subcaps, like battleships, and the supercarriers is just utterly insane. And everything has to be available to the very top tier. Because as soon as Netties turn around and go, well, actually, we're going to add some content, but it's exclusive to these ships and not the ones that we've been pushing on you, then suddenly the people who are just buying into every bullshit project that Netties puts forward suddenly have to go, oh, hang on a second, I've just spent all this money on a supercarrier, but they're adding content for other things as well. So maybe when they add Titans, I should hold off on that because there's other content that I can do that doesn't require me to pay into a Titan. That's why Netties will not do this, and why everything has to be inclusive of the top, and the top is king. That's the problem with Echoes, that what used to be Tech 10 was the end game, it's now Tech 10, plus fully upgraded nanocore, plus all of these skills that you can only start training at Tech 10. Tech 10's the beginning of the game now. You have nothing to do until Tech 10. At Tech 10, suddenly you start training into your capital skills and going from there. And it's still a few months away for anyone who hits Tech 10 to actually be in something remotely relevant to what Netties are trying to sell and are thus promoting in the game. Anyway, let's move on to Sunday's update, day two. In the Cobalt Edge, there are different sized Wanderer camps filled with various drone forces. Pilots can defeat these drones to obtain materials for manufacturing ships and equipment. After defeating all enemies, pilots can open unanalyzed relics to obtain blueprints and materials. Now, first things first here, it's nice to see they are actually using the rogue drone models. Of course they are, though, to be fair, it's going to be a case of just copy and paste everything they can across. What remains to be seen is whether or not they have rogue drone AI and how these ships work. Are they just going to be using missiles or are they going to be actually using weaponry that is a little bit different to other things? What we do have here is some information regarding manufacturing ships and equipment. Now, what ships and equipment are we going to get? What why do we need these new materials? If we haven't got any new ships and equipment, then you can kind of still harvest everything that you could harvest in Nullsec, etc. currently, and just use that instead. What is the purpose of the added risk here? It says obtain minerals, not new minerals. I assume there are going to be some new minerals, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, but if there's new minerals and new materials, how do those play into the current ships that we have? They don't. Netties is always additive, not enhancative. I can't think of the word I need there, but basically Netties don't tend to go back and it iterative. They don't iterate on a previous idea. They just add on top of it, which means if there are new ships and equip uh, new sh new materials, then they will be new ships and equipment that use them, because they're not going to go back and redo things. It'll be a case of, oh, well, these new ships require materials only found in Cobble Edge. Now, here we also have, after defeating all enemies, pilots can open unanalyzed relics to obtain blueprints and materials. Now, I don't know if that means we're going to have to hack into those. It says relics, cool, but it says unanalyzed. So that suggests that kind of once you've completed the site, there are just ca uh, caches that you open. And that gives you your, your stuff, your blueprints and materials. Again, are those blueprints and materials new blueprints and materials? That remains to be seen. This is so vague as to be practically useless. Um, I'm hoping that you need to analyze these and actually hack into them to give us explorers something to do whilst we're out in Cobalt Edge. Since I only fly cruisers and below, yeah, cool, everyone else is going to be bringing their capitals and super capitals. What do I have to do? Hang around the site until it's finished, and then hopefully be able to hack into the containers. This is like forgotten and unsecured data sites in JSpace, and so for that, I do have to give Netties a bit of credit that essentially you've got a mix of combat and exploration in one site. Is it great? No, it's minimal effort, but I have to give them credit that at least they've somewhat taken that idea. The second part here, pilots can find common ores and gas clouds like in the Cobalt Edge, as well as gas cloud C70, which is used to develop new materials. So yeah, common ores and gas clouds like in the Cobalt Edge, I think they mean like in the current systems, as well as gas cloud C70. So I don't know if there are new ores or things like that for new ships, but C70 apparently, new materials being added for that. 
Again, I'm still disappointed at how gas huffing was added into Echoes, that is basically just mining a different colour asteroid that has slightly different stuff to it. There's no new equipment, no reason for skills or ships or anything like that. And it's been awful because there's been very little use for it. So I'm excited, in inverted commas, to see why we want C70, what is actually being added there. Cool. Let's move on to the third point. This was yesterday's one for Monday. Upwell Consortium has enhanced its research and development to produce a reconnaissance outpost that can function in the Cobalt Cobalt Edge. Nice to see that NetEase putting all these things out are actually even bothering to proofread them. Cobalt Edge. God, who are they paying to do the proofreading? Between the dev Q&A and this, just find someone else. Jeez, that's awful. Or just have a pride in your job. Upwell Consortium has enhanced its research new reconnaissance outpost. We can't take in the old outposts and citadels. No, we've got to build an entirely new one. Why? Because that's how netties do ore sinks and mineral sinks. One-off purchases. That once you've done it, that's it. It's done doesn't seem that there's any form of like uh, sovereignty going on in Cobalt Edge from what we can see here. Um, so it looks like it's just kind of get out there and drop a corp outpost, which again is going to mean first come first served. There'll be little fights over them instantly. And then once those are done, it's just going to be basically Cobalt Edge. You're going to have an alliance in there that will essentially own the NPC station and as many of these outposts as possible. And therefore, anyone else wanting to come in and run this content is just going to get ganked instantly. There is no actual control to any of this. Netties haven't thought anything ahead on this. It's just a case of what can we put in that is going to require players to suddenly build something new, so sink all of their... Uh, their isk, all of the minerals, that will help the market, yeah, for about a week before it completely crashes again. So, yeah, it's just it's so low effort. The outpost is categorised into two types, clone outpost and corp outpost, both equipped with maintenance and industry lines. Cool. Okay, so you've got a clone outpost, which will allow you to do the whole clone jumping, and a corporation outpost that does goodness knows what maintenance industry will see. There's no information in this, and if you are restricting yourself to just the global server, that's how it's going to be. However, if you dig a little bit deeper or go looking through the Chinese servers, you get a whole bunch of information that NetEase won't tell us. We get no information. There's me with a signed non-disclosure agreement, and I find out all of this shit when someone messages me and says, hey, have you seen this thing on this Chinese website? I'll put a link to this in the description. Use something like Google Chrome and you can auto-translate it, as I've done here. Why do we not get this information? Well, I don't know, because the likes of Carrie will message and say, I'll say, hey, is there any information about the update? Oh, no, I haven't got anything yet. And then it turns out that two days before that conversation, this has gone live on the Chinese side. It's like you do have the information, you're just not revealing it to the rest of the world. The Chinese server is all that matters, the rest of us are second-rate citizens. Let's see what this is all about then. The second part of this anniversary revelation, Cobalt Frontier gameplay review, Sovereignty Struggle is imminent. Open up distant star fields, explore the vast sea of stars. After the information of the Nova Field, Cobalt Blue Frontier was released. It sparked an upsurge of discussion in New Eden. In yesterday's news, we gave brief introduction to Cobalt Frontier and the Wastelander drone. Click to review the first news of this anniversary. We should probably also open that and have a look at this one. Um... Of course, this would help. There we go. Let's have a look. And I'm going to need to translate this, which I'm doing live because I am an idiot and didn't prepare this ahead of time. So let's go try these. There we are. So hello, pilots. In the blink of an eye, we spent another year in EVE Infinite Galaxy mobile game. In last year's hibernator version, the launch of the new input implant system and dungeon gameplay, Deep Sleep, so sleepers and dormant realms, injected new elements of gameplays, blah, 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 spiel, self-jacking off of about how this Cobalt Blue Frontier consists of 10 constellations, a total of 69 galaxies. Is there a date on this, by the way? Oh, would you look at that? Yeah, the 11th this came out. Okay, cool, cool. It will become the first distant star to officially open to new pilots. Due to the influence of the environment and des uh, deserters, the pioneers have only successfully built the Stargate in the only logistic supply station of the constellation. The space station is located in the EY, uh, EBYOS galaxy with less environmental impact. The space station has functions such as maintenance, industry, and hangars. There are no sentry guns and mobile guards, and it's impossible to dock the super flagship or set it as a base. Pilots, please pay attention to safety. So at least there, we're getting the point of, uh, yeah... 
that there is, and uh, the supercarriers at least can't dock at these stations. Good, so there is a downside. Destroyer haunts the far borders of New Eden, which is the collective name for this drone force. These drone ships, including frigates, battleships, and super aircraft carrier challenges, are constantly patrolling, picking up waste and breaking down ships in the universe. Um, so yeah, rogue drones, eight types of conventional ships, and more revelation is expected. We're getting the right rogue drone graphics here. Uh, wealth of manufacturing materials from the wasteland of drones, new equipment, drones, modified parts, and general components. At that time, pilots can go to Cobalt for exploration. Cool, so we are getting some new materials, and we're getting here is the graphics for the new drones. After reading the above content, I believe everyone has a preliminary understanding of the Cobalt Blue Frontier. If pilots have more questions, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so that's basically all it is. That there, It's confirming that, yes, we are going to be getting um, like new materials. Cool, so let's go back to the previous page. Keep doing the full screen. I need to hit the translate first. No, not install app. Probably should, to be fair. That's the only way I'm going to be getting updates on these news. Anyway, so let's have a look. In the asteroid belt in the Cobalt Blue Frontier, and in addition to the various ores and gas clouds that are common in New Eden, there's also the gas cloud C-70. It's used for the development of new materials. During the process of collecting all the pilot may be attacked by a small number of deserted drones hidden in the asteroid belt, so we need to be vigilant. So they are actually adding the possibility of, uh, what's it called? Drone uh, belt rats. Cool. Can't add those to New Eden, but we can add them to the new area. Cool. Hopefully this is a precursor to people going, oh, belt rats aren't actually awful. Let's add them to the ones in New Eden as well. They should do. They really should do. It's a good idea. But hey... The only new mineral there we can confirm is Gas Cloud C70, so the rest of it is just your standard stuff. So I'd ask why you're going to be mining this other than the C70. Due to environmental impact, the current planetary development efficiency is not high. No new resources have been discovered. Common resources are not much different from other galaxies. Cool, so what's the point? Cobble Edge has various scavenger camps of various sizes filled with a variety of scaven uh, scavenger drones that are breaking down the wreckage. After defeating the Raider drone, there's a chance to obtain a variety of minerals used to manufacture ships and equipment. A variety of materials, again, doesn't say new. In addition to the Wastelander camp, also large camp Wastelander checkpoint in which there are not only ordinary drones, but also elite drones. By defeating the elite drones, you can obtain advanced chips and equipment manufacturing materials. Again, doesn't say new, just says advanced chips and manufacturing materials. Don't know what those are going to be. After defeating all enemies, you can also open some unresolved ruins to obtain loot such as blueprints and materials. And again, I'm hoping that is an actual hackable container, but I'm not wholeheartedly holding my breath. In addition, there are rare ancient relics distributed in the Cobalt Blue border area. These relics have certain research value. Scanners are needed to discover these relics, and the relics are difficult to decipher. Pilots need to be prepared. So new exploration content is going to be added. Yay, that'll be exciting. Something to actually do as an explorer and head out and find some new stuff. Again, it does say certain research value. It's very vague, doesn't tell you what you'll find. At the same time, battle after the battle with the Deserter with the UAV, the researchers developed an integ integrated technology suitable for UAVs. Drones is what they mean here, and launched an integrated model of all UAVs. So we're getting integrated drones. Um, 16 types of combat drone. Design of this model integrates several components from the Raider drone, enhancing its performance in many ways. So we're getting new, better drones. Again, just flat out better drones. Can't necessarily complain about that. Drones do need some new stuff, but again, the fact that it is basically brought into here is going to be a final nail in the coffin of all things to do with faction warfare. The only reason people do faction war games right now is basically for the drones. So yeah, if no one wants those anymore because you can just harvest this shit easier, that's what we're doing. At the first open distance starfield, it's open to sovereignty competition. Like other starfields, Legion alliances of all parties can go to the starfield to participate in sovereignty battle. After it's officially opened, mark the name of their Legion alliance on the new starfield. So yeah, we're going to be having people dropping outposts um, and getting sovereignty set up out in uh, Cobble Edge. Due to the impact on the environment, they keep saying this, like, you know, what... The impact of the environment. Ordinary clone outposts, legion outposts, and auxiliary buildings cannot be anchored because we need to sell you the new stuff. We can't have you using the old stuff. No. Our pole group has upgraded and improved the ordinary outpost and developed an anchor that can be anchored in the Cobalt Blue Border, a designated reconnaissance outpost. 
and divide into clone reconnaissance outposts and legion or alliance reconnaissance outposts, both of which have maintenance and basic industrial production lines. The clone is suitable for scouting in small scale battles, has more weapon slots, but the low slot energy output interface is abandoned to improve strength and stability. The reconnaissance outpost has only one enhancement and not equipped with the shield enhancement function. And you get all of this. I'm sure someone can screenshot that and run it through Google Translate. I don't really care enough at this point in time. We've got four highs, four mids. That's all really matters. Legion scout outposts, on the other hand, are suitable as scout outposts for frontline bases. They're easy to deploy and have high defense capabilities like other scout outposts in order to improve strength and stability. They also give up the energy anchor output interface, so they're just simple little things that you shove into space um, in order to grab sovereignty. The new Cobalt Frontier will be officially opened on August 17th. We'll also answer questions about entering and leaving Cobalt Frontier that everyone's concerned about and follow up revelations. Pilots, remember to keep following us and get the latest information as soon as possible. This goes live in two days, folks. This goes live in two days that we're getting this. And the global server, no information at all. All of it is here in Chinese. We're... God, it annoys me. It annoys me so much. What is the point in my freaking NDA? Why do they make me sign a legal agreement that if I break, I'm suable for $10,000, but then do nothing with it? Like, what is the point in that? Um, so, yeah, Cobalt Edge, we are looking at very little interesting new gameplay. Yes, there are new exploration sites. Is there anything new about them? No, they just go in and do the thing. There is ratting sites. Anything new about those? Unlikely drone AI is likely to be just as crap as everything else. There's no real new minerals. We've got no information on new ships. So this whole C-70, oh yeah, you can go and collect C-70 and do things with it. And you can get blueprints and stuff. Tell us why. Like, maybe, maybe I'm being unreasonable. Maybe it's not fair of me to expect information ahead of time for the biggest update to Eve Echoes in a year. But equally, what's new here? What's exciting here? Like, I want to be excited about this. P people tell me, oh, Benzie, you're always looking for the negative. No, I'm not. I've just... Forgive me, when you look around and all you see is negative, you, you don't... There is no positives anymore. Oh, it's new content. Yeah, but it's not exciting. All it's doing is once again pushing out the end further and further, so any new player joining is even further away from being relevant than they were beforehand. There's nothing for new pilots here, nothing for small ship pilots here, other than new exploration sites that are unclear why we even want to run them. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's nice that there's a reason to break out the Probe Explorer again, and I'll probably fly some fleets with the Corporation or Alliance, you know, running some of these sites just to see if they're any good. But I don't see why they would be. Because Netties have shown no interest in actually upgrading any of their combat systems or their AI or doing any of this meaningful stuff. It's simple copy-paste. It's just take these new ship, new ship designs from EVE Online, paste them into EVE Echoes and just let it run the same way it's always run. Or we're just going to change the loot that drops in these boxes and that. But no idea why we want any of this. The only new thing are the outposts. And they're arguably worse than the standard outposts. They're just needed to go in this current area. There's nothing new or exciting about them. It's basically, oh, you've got all of these exciting toys that you're already using, but because we're doing something new, you can't use the new toys. You have to buy all new toys. These blueprints, are we going to get these from Cobalt Edge, do you imagine? Or are those going to be in a loot box available on the day that all of this goes live? Because I reckon it's probably going to be both, if I'm being completely fair. I reckon the blueprints and that for these structures will be available in boxes on day one, so that you can just buy them and get a head start that way. Because that's what NetEase want you to do. They want you to spend as much money as possible to get a head start. And whoever gets in there first is going to be really hard to shift out because of the nature of how these wormholes work. It's a defender's advantage. It's a big old defender's advantage. I don't know. I'm, I want to be excited about this. It's wormholes for fuck's sake. I want to be excited about this. I'm just not. It is literally the most boring, half assed way to implement wormholes and drone regions. <laughs> yeah, here we are. there we are. It's from a Chinese player, it's hard to be innovative in this game. Combat is too low level. Come up with some new ways to play, such as non-destructive chaos, squad battle rankings. 
Jin Bai is still a Legion game. The Land family does not need to fight. There may be a competition, as you imagined. Yeah, whatever. But I don't know. Yeah, he likes to still no high security wormholes. Yeah. Oh no! Get out of high security space. It's a whole game out there, other than fucking Claralam. Anyway, folks, again, I would love to be more positive on this. I'm really hoping that something drastic happens in the next two days before this goes live, and I'm like, oh my god, this is amazing. I just don't see it happening. Let me know in the comment section down below what excites you, if anything, about this. Have you accidentally uninstalled yet? Because I honestly... Views on my Echoes videos are going down. They're beginning to stress me out a bit more than anything else. I am of the point where, you know what? I'm not sure I need this anymore. We'll see. We'll see. If this, if this update doesn't do it for me, I've been at this for three years and it's been getting steadily more and more disappointing for the last two, so we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, for those of you worried about my mental health doing this, don't worry, I quite enjoy ranting and talking about Echoes, just yeah, as it's losing its place at the moment, it, it's getting close to the time to move on, I think. Um, I find it cathartic talking about it like this, and I do miss the game. I really do. I miss when this game had potential before NetEase showed their cards and basically went, oh yeah, we're just going to essentially rip your credit, card, your credit card for all it's worth. That's our gameplay. How, do, how much are you willing to swipe? Anyway, folks, yeah, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Otherwise, happy sailing and see you in New Eden. I hope this is good. Just don't think it's going to be.